Box, he'll be later. Squawk Box Exploratory Committee ends this week with a candidate who's running uh, on the message that this is a time for truth. Joining us now to talk about his economic agenda, uh, former Minnesota Governor Tim Pawlenty. Uh, good morning, Governor. You're just on, uh, I, I mean, you, you, you've seen uh, talk shows. We talk about a lot of things. Uh, and um, I, I know you had your IFB in and heard all this. You didn't leave. Thank you for staying. <laughs> well, it was gripping. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> As a viewer, uh, you get, I want to show you something just to, to intro this uh, to start the first question. When, when I did it, I did an interview with U.S. News like back in 2009 in August. And the headline that they drew out of the interview and we'll show you was that Kernan for Tim Pawlenty uh, in 2012, and they spelled my name wrong, K-E-R-N-A-N, which is the first thing I saw. Uh, but that was August of 2009. And I want to make it clear, I wasn't for you, but back then I was saying you were the likely, I thought you were the likely candidate. And now with the, uh, with the exit of, of Mitch Daniels, um, you know, now it's like a, people are, are saying it's between you and Romney. But everybody is still saying, why don't we have someone we really want? Why two years later are you still not someone we really want? I, what do you got to do? Well, first of all, I got to get known. If you look at the polls, about half the Republicans in the country don't even know who I am yet. So as the name ID increases, we're getting more support, particularly in those early states. So actually, the state of the race we like because the folks who ran last time are well known and they're not uh, you know, catching fire, so to speak. So that gives us time and space to grow from unknown to known and supported. So I like our position in the race. And your description there, Joe, sounded a little like John Kerry. I mean, you were for me before you were against me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. No, no, I wasn't. I was trying, during that interview, I wasn't trying to say I was supporting someone. No, I was I just don't. trying to say who, who did I think would, would have finally maybe emerged. Because back then I was worried about Romney Kerry, as I'm worried about Romney Kerry right now. It gives you an advantage. When, when the current administration that you're going to run against is saying, wow, that's some plan he's got up there. We love Romney. I mean, that's not the greatest <laughs> thing to hear, is it? Well, you know, I, it, everybody's got a different record and background. What I bring to the race is I'm a new face. I've got a record in Minnesota of cutting taxes, cranking down on spending, reforming entitlement programs, market-based, not government-based health care reform, and much more. And so, you know, I, I like the fact that the race isn't settled yet because that gives me time to get my campaign message out. And as we do, we're getting support, particularly in those early states. So I, I kind of like the state of the race. Uh, Governor, this is Doug Holt Um I, I have a couple questions about your policies, but, but I ask you, first one, ask you the important question. Yeah. Are you dull? That's what I read. Are you dull? Uh, I don't think so, but I also ask compared to who, Doug? And I'm not running for, you know, entertainer-in-chief or comedian-in-chief. We got a country that is in deep trouble. We need people who are seasoned, experienced leaders with a record of results. That's what I bring to the table. And, you know, I, I might not be as exciting as Donald Trump, but, you know, he's not going to get in the Oval Office. So. You look at who gets elected president, most of the time it's somebody who has, you know, got a good a grasp of the issues, good leadership skills, strong leader. And we don't elect comedians in chief or, you know, yellers and screamers in chief. We elect serious leaders and put them in the Oval Office, and that's what I offer. So you went to Iowa and you said you're opposed to ethanol subsidies. Uh, was that a good move, and do you think the rest of the field is going to follow you? Well, politically, I don't know if it's a good move or not, but here's what I believe. Uh, the country is in big, big trouble, and it's the time for the truth. So we can't have any more sacred cows. we got a president who has a campaign plan, but he doesn't have an economic plan. So just by way of example, this week we went to Iowa and said it's time to phase out the ethanol subsidies. We went to Florida and talked about what it's going to take to reform Social Security. We're in New York at Wall Street today to talk about what it's going to take to clean up Wall Street and get their snout out of the public trough. Uh, and down the list. And, and we're going to have to tell the American people the truth. The hour is late. And I don't know if it's good politics or not, but what I do know is that's the only reason I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. And if we're just going to send people to Washington or going to continue the status quo, any doofus can do that. And, uh, I'll, you know, I'll go play hockey and drink beer, but this is more important, and that's why I'm running. But, yeah, we've had this, this discussion all week, in fact, Governor, about, in, in sort of a cynical way, in, in that truth-telling isn't so great because, you know, people keep saying, um, you know, you got to have people who aren't worried about being elected or reelected. You have to have people that want to lead. Problem is, you got to get elected to lead. And, and people that, that are trying to get in the position of leadership, if you tell the American people that they're going to take away some of their Social Security benefits or you tell them we're going to reform some type of uh, entitlement with Medicare, then they point to what happened in New York uh, just a couple of days ago, where this was a shoe in uh, Republican candidate, uh, and she, they're saying that she lost. Uh, because of, uh, of Congressman Ryan's Medicare proposal. So you, you, you exert leadership and you don't get in a position to ever lead because you don't get elected. 
Well, I think it's important that we campaign like we're going to govern and govern like we campaign. Otherwise, you're a hypocrite, and uh, that's why people don't like politicians. And number two, if you're not willing to say these things and actually do them, then we might as well send uh, status quo people to Washington, and we'll get more of the same. But, for example, Joe, on Social Security, if you just generally say, you know, we're going to cut Social Security, of course nobody's for that. But if you put specific proposals on the table that are reasonable and measured, we can get a majority of Americans to support it. Let me give you two quick examples. Let's say for folks who are not on the program now, in other words, no change for anybody who's retired, no changes for anywhere, anybody who's near retirement, but for the folks who are coming into the workforce and the next generation, we're going to gradually raise the retirement age over time in light of increased life expectancies. We can get a majority of the country to support that. Really? We, how, how, do you, how do you find that, Governor? Because the, uh, the numbers I've seen and the polls I've seen show that no matter what, people don't want that to change, even when they're confronted with the facts that this program's in big trouble. Well, I think it, it takes leadership, and if you're going to be a leader, you got to educate, you got to raise awareness, and you got to mobilize. I'm also willing to say we should means test not the whole program, but the cost of living adjustment. So if you're wealthy, you're not going to get your cost of living adjustment, but if you're middle income or lower income, you will. If we can't do those things, uh, and we can't look the American people in the eye and tell them what the real problems are and what the real solutions are, then, Becky, we're just wasting our time. You might as well send, you know, another crop of mm -hmm. people, normal politicians, and we'll just continue to sink. The hour is late. The country's in trouble. I'm running because I can fix it and save it. But in order to do that, we need the whole country to understand this challenge and rise to it. And that's why I'm on the show like this. Yeah. You know, Governor, some people, I think, are wondering when it's time to start maybe talking about some of the other Republican candidates. What, what's your plan? Will you, will you try to win... Iowa, and w w would you say something negative about uh, uh, Governor Romney, or, or are you just going to stick with, with talking about President Obama? Well, we've got to win in these early states or do well. Obviously, the history shows that uh, the nominee is presumptively picked often in, after the first five or six states or, or less. So we've got to do well in those early states. We're going to offer up our vision for America. In the world that we have today with blogs and the media and everybody, everybody's positives, negatives, warts, and good parts are going to be fully revealed. There's not going to be any mystery about Mitt Romney's record or my record or anybody else's record. So that all get put out there. But I, as for me, I'm going to tell people what I stand for and what I bring to the table and try to abide by Reagan's uh, 11th commandment, which is I'm not going to criticize other Republicans. Uh, at least I'm not going to be the first one to start it. I'll respond if need be. But, you know, we need to be a team. We need to get our party united. We need to get our country united. And I don't need to go around kicking our team members in the shins. I'll tell you what I'm for, and then you can decide whether you like it or not. Sarah Palin's got a big bus now, big old bus. And it's got a bunch of painting on the side. It's all red, white, and blue. And she says she's not really doing anything. She wants to drive around and see what made America great. So she's going to drive. She's going to stop in New Hampshire, stop in some other places. Um, you got any feel for whether what's brewing there? You got any idea? Who, who knows? Uh, well, how I about Bachman? They say she's going to get she's going to get in too eventually. Yeah, it's you know I, 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 there's going to be a lot of people in. Uh, I welcome them into the race. I can get the field settled, and we can get on to the issues of, that are facing the country. You know, the, I, I don't want to focus on early polls that are based, based mostly on name ID or bus tours or all this other stuff. We've got a country that is the greatest country the world's ever known. It is sinking. It is drowning in debt and deficit. We got four dollar a gallon gas. We got crushing levels of unemployment. And let's quit goofing around with and, and get down to the issue of talking about what it's going to take to fix it. All right. And, let's talk about. Let's talk right. about that crushing debt as a starter. I mean, you look at the debt that's there. We know we have a spending problem, but the Democrats say we also have a revenue problem, that you need to raise more revenue if you're going to deal with this massive bill that we've built up over years. What do you say to that? Well, two things. We should first, Becky, talk about growth. You know, the CBO predicts basically 2% GDP growth over the next 10 years. That's pathetic. Let's say we're going to let's set an aspirational goal of 3% or 4% or 5% of what it's going to take to do that. And first, let's undo the recent harm that's been done. Let's repeal Obamacare. Let's make sure Sarbanes-Oxley doesn't visit disproportionate burdens on mid-sized firms. 
let's really fix Dodd-Frank and what caused the housing crisis, including uh, privatizing Fannie and Freddie. Let's have a pro-growth tax code, which drives down rates and cleans out the crony capitalism and exemptions and deductions in the tax code. Let's have a pro-American, Americanized energy plan that has what, drilling. What are some of the specifics, uh, just <clears throat> for the taxes in particular? Because we've heard from a lot of candidates this week and uh, just trying to get a sense. Yesterday we spoke with Kane, who said he wants to cut uh, some taxes down to 12 and a half percent. It talks about cutting di capital gains taxes to zero. What, what your proposals on these? Yeah, areas. we're going to have a economic growth proposal out shortly, but the direction of it's going to be rates that are dramatically lower, cleaning out the uh, exemptions and credits and deductions to the fullest extent possible, and have a flatter, simpler, more transparent, more pro-growth tax code. But we also need an energy policy. Uh, we're also going to have to really fix health care. President Obama stepped to the plate and swung and whiffed. And that is one of the main driving forces of government budgets, business budgets, family budgets. And we have to fix health care in terms of cost containment and much more. But that's the real work, the roll up your sleeves uh, kind of work that the country needs. And we should be focused on that instead of uh, you know, all the other nonsense that goes on in the media. Governor, the, the House Republicans put out a, a plan yesterday. And I wondered what your take was on that. And in particular, do you like this idea of having uh, tax-free repatriations for the, the large U.S. companies? Yeah, we've got, a, as you know, a mountain of uh, cash sitting overseas in, by U.S. companies. Uh, I think repatriating those earnings and allowing them to come back to the United States via a tax holiday or a dramatically reduced tax rate during the repatriation period would be a great thing for the country, Doug. It's easy to do. And by the way, no matter what the rate would be, even if it was very low or near zero, you'd still get revenues because they're not booking anything for it right now. The expectations for that revenue in the numbers are zero. So any amount of money would actually be good for the United States, plus it would bring back all that redeployment of capital and investment. Hey, Tim, are you, will you take the, 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 uh, the social conservative route, too? Are there people you need to make sure you don't, uh, you know, alienate? Uh, do you have to do that to get the, to, to get the Republican nomination these days? You're going to stay pragmatic and, and, and just talk about fiscal issues? Well, you got to be who you are, and you got to be authentic to your record and what you believe. So if you look at the Republican Party and the conservative coalition broadly, it is a coalition. You've got economic conservatives, you've got social conservatives, you've got libertarian Tea Party conservatives, you have national defense and security conservatives, and a few others. And I think I'm going to be the one candidate in the race, I will be the one candidate in the race that can unite the whole party. I'm a conservative across the board. And so I don't have to, you know, peel primarily just to one slice. I can unite the whole party. I believe most of the other candidates will primarily appeal to one of those buckets, but not more than one or two. Yeah, I think they said Huckabee getting out helped you, too. Huckabee and Daniels both. Uh, but then, you know, Aiken comes in, and you're talking about <laughs> Jeb Bush, possibly, or, or you know, there's, there's, there's always somebody else. The grass is always greener. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to watch. And... Uh, I don't know, can you do a backflip or something before we leave or um, jump Absolutely. up and down or go like this? Sure. Or... Yeah, I can uh, have sparks come out my ears, <laughs> <laughs> let my hair on fire, <laughs> juggle. <laughs> yeah, juggle. Why not try to do an interview juggling? That well, is, that, that's going to be on YouTube. It'll be awesome. <laughs> It'll be viral. Governor, thank you uh, for, for your time this morning. I hope to see you again as, uh, as we go forward to, towards 2012. Thanks, Joe.